The following video addresses the inspection and repair of the AIMS C200 and C300 backflow prevention assemblies sizes 8 through 10 inch. Before beginning any work, familiarize yourself with these procedures to avoid harming yourself or damaging the assembly. A copy of the following procedures, as well as specification sheets, repair kit ordering information, and additional product resources can be found online at aimsfirewater.com. To inspect your backflow assembly, you'll need a socket wrench, a number four Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a one half 13 by five fully threaded hex bolt, and an FDA approved lubricant. To begin your inspection, shut down the water supply by slowly closing both the outlet and the inlet shutoff valves. Relieve any air or water pressure trapped within the system by slowly opening the number two, number three, and number four test cocks. Disconnect the two couplers around the valve body. Before opening the unit, clean off any dirt or debris that may have collected on the valve body during its life. Once clean, unthread the number three test cock and move the rubber gaskets away from the valve sleeve. Gently slide the cover back. Remove the stainless steel check retainer plates. Inside the unit, you'll observe two check assemblies, differentiated as the number one and number two checks respectively. Locate the two slots found atop each check and carefully insert a flat blade screwdriver between the check and the valve body. Using the screwdriver as a wedge, gently slide the module towards the open zone. Pull the check free and remove it from the assembly. The number one check should be removed first, followed by the number two. To open and inspect the checks found in the 8 through 10 inch backflow prevention assemblies, you'll first need to thread a 1 half 13 by 5 hex bolt through the service hole located on the bottom of the check until it makes contact with the linkage. Continue threading the bolt until the hole in the cam aligns with the service notches on either side of the check. Place a number 4 Phillips head screwdriver through the cam arm and slowly unthread the hex bolt to transfer the check tension to the screwdriver. With a flat blade screwdriver, disconnect the E-clip and the pin. Begin your inspection by cleaning the check with water to remove any dirt or debris. Once clean, thoroughly dry the unit before proceeding with the inspection. Oftentimes, damage or deeply embedded debris may be invisible to the naked eye and can only be detected by close examination and touch. Closely inspect all parts of the check, including the check body, the check clapper and sealing surface, the rubber sealing disc, and the O-ring and O-ring groove. For closer examination of the rubber sealing disc, the keeper plate can be unscrewed and the sealing disc carefully removed with a flat blade screwdriver. If one side of the disc happens to be cut or torn, the disc can be reversed and reinstalled in lieu of ordering a replacement. If both sides are damaged, it should be replaced. Inspect the O-ring. If it's damaged in any way, it should be replaced. With all parts of the check cleaned, inspected, and replaced as needed, begin rebuilding the unit. After re-threading the hex bolt, replace the E-clip and pin, and remove the screwdriver. Unthread the bolt and prepare the check for reinstallation by lubricating the O-ring with an FDA-approved lubricant. When rebuilding the assembly, the number two check should be replaced first, followed by the number one. If either check cannot be reinstalled by hand, place a small piece of 2x4 against the check body and gently apply pressure to slide it into place. 
Thorough lubrication of the O-rings with an FDA-approved lubricant will help during reinstallation. With the checks replaced, reinstall the stainless steel retainer plates and close the cover sleeve. Replace the rubber gaskets around either edge of the sleeve and re-thread the number 3 test cock. Finish rebuilding the assembly by reinstalling the two gaskets around the valve body. Tighten the bolts evenly until they make pad-to-pad -pad contact. To restart the system, slowly open the inlet shutoff valve, close the number 2, number 3, and number 4 test cocks, and open the outlet. For more information on local startup and testing procedures, consult your local municipality or manufacturer's representative.